Let's uh, transition, um, having been part, all of us, I think, of the Bevacizumab program, and now having discussed these two very exciting frontline part maintenance trials, Prima and Vilia. Why don't you just use both at the same there time? There you go. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> and so that was uh, prospectively tested at the third sort of pivotal paper here in the presidential session at ESMO, adding Elaprib in the maintenance phase when Bevacizumab was started. So this is a randomized phase two trial done in Europe where Bevacizumab was approved sooner and that's why it was primarily, not primarily, exclusively a European trial. So Bevacizumab, as per the label, is for 15 months or 21 doses. And so at the, after uh, uh, the six cycles of chemotherapy and five doses of Bevacizumab, patients were randomized to 300 milligrams twice daily of Olaparib and for, for two years. So they got some Bevacizumab, they got some both, both well, drugs for a something. period and then Olaparib. Very uh, interesting idea. Um, the primary endpoint of that pro, uh, study, interestingly, was ITT not HRD and not BRCA. It's kind of weird that you would have a PARP inhibitor trial and not have an HRD or BRCA endpoint. I don't really get it. M maybe they were confident that it was gonna work in everyone, and, and, and I, I guess it did, yeah. that, that, that the hazard ratio was 0.59, um, you know, uh, hazard, uh, the confidence 0 0.49, 0 0.72, with about a six month improvement. I, I like the ITT concept, but we're, we're past that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we're just beyond that, and so what happens when there's such a dramatic effect in the BRCA patients, it drags it with it, mm -hmm. okay? So, so I'm, I'm not really sure uh, that, that the ITT is, is, the, is the right endpoint. Uh, Katie, tell us about some of the other endpoints here in PALA-1. Yeah, PALA-1 is, I think, sort of the easiest and the hardest study to discuss, because it only has one endpoint that's pre-specified, and you just gave those results. But it is intriguing uh, in that Unlike the other two studies, it has an active comparator right. as, as yes. the maintenance. And so that already changes the bar for your, um, for your hazard ratio because this, uh, this group's not getting placebo or yeah. nothing where you know how they're gonna perform. They're getting a drug that we know works mm -hmm. pretty well. Not as well as PARP maybe, but pretty well. So, so that changes things. And so when you look at the subgroups, which are completely exploratory, and we have to keep reemphasizing that, they actually look pretty reasonable here when you think about it. If you look at the group that you've been interested in, this BRCA wild type HRD positive, the hazard ratio is 0.43. Mm -hmm. And you get 12 months. I like it. Of, I mean, you get a year. So, you know, I know where I'd want my patients to be. So is that just the PARP effect? Because if you look at, um, you know, if you look at the Prima analysis, you go from eight to 20. So that's about 12 months too. Um, so it's similar, is it just the PARP or is the BEV additive? Yeah. I don't, we can't answer the question. I don't know that we can, we can really interpret this without a single arm Olaparib arm, but 0.43 is pretty nice. Yeah, everything, yeah, everything looks nice. And I think the, the kind of the addition here is that getting back to that patient we started with, right? So if you had a situation when you started the treatment that you said, you know what, this is a patient I want to give BEV to. Yes. The large volume, whatever, right, whatever. I don't have the HRD so now, back. So now, stage four. What this, stage four. Right, so well, what this is doing now is it's saying, okay, now we've teed up this patient because she hasn't progressed. She's up here at, at now at the decision point of a maintenance, and now you got choices for that. You can continue BEV, or you can add the PARP inhibitor or LAPRIB to Or the, stop and do NARAPRIB. Or, stop, or stop and do NARAPRIB. Which yeah. you're probably not going to do. Right, because... You're probably not going to... That's right. Be stop the bevacizumab. Based on our 218 experience, knowing what ARM2 did in 218, right? So you wouldn't have started that unless, unless you are ready to do it. I think it's a different right. question now, though, in that... In, and this is, again, I'm just making stuff up. But That's what this whole thing is It's the whole thing. But, I mean, you made the point earlier between Billy and the these title. other two that you're yeah. making the decision at the beginning. Earlier, okay. Because yeah. I don't want to withhold something until maintenance. Right. So how do you get maintenance? Because you respond. And most patients respond yes. to frontline. But some don't that you just brought up. So if I start Bev, I've increased my likelihood yeah. that I'm going to get response. everybody into uh -huh. a robust response yep. so they can benefit from Bev and then, or benefit from a PARP inhibitor, whichever one I pick. Um, and this tells me it's safe to use the combination. I think the discontinuation rate was 20%, which mm -hmm. yeah. I think mm -hmm. we need to look carefully at the other ones. Yeah. It's a little higher. Um, 
combinations are more toxic than single agents. Yeah. Do you want to use both drugs? We know we, in the U.S. anyway, we can use bevacizumab again, and we know it works just as well. So, Which is an important distinction from Europe, because right. the Europeans will not be able to use bevacizumab after bevacizumab, That's right. but we can. So I don't really want any of that conversation. Right. That if we use it frontline, we can't use it at recurrence. So you had a comment, Michael. Yeah, I just wanted to bring your attention, because I think the HRD group is interesting. We sh we've now shifted back to the 42 cutoff. Yeah, which exactly. Which is so the 33 with Velia, yeah. but the 42 with Prima and, and Pale. I think it explains same. some of the differences between the studies. That's right. Um, the other thing I will say is that you know there's a long legacy of using combinations compared to single agents. It's really That's not interesting, right? It's really not that the novel. right study because right. what you really want to test is sequential use of the yeah, single agent compared it. to the single agent. But no I one ever it. does that study. Yeah, and it will man. never be and done. And I'm going I'm to I'm publicly say, you know, I, I think Mike Bookman, who has been fighting for this, this study for years, I'm going to make it on tape, that, that he's, he's, been, he's been wanting yeah, us he's to do that. It. He wants to control that next line as well. He wants to put the se sequence into play. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I got to credit him for wanting to do this. It's just been hard to get somebody to step up to the plate. It's not it. hard; it's impossible. But anyway, okay. <laughs> so 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 Shannon, I'm I'm, I'm getting better at this, um, taking uh, exploratory endpoints <laughs> and, and, and doing cross trial comparisons <laughs> and making a definitive conclusion. Um, I'm getting better. Uh, it's not my my style. So the non bracket HRD mm -hmm. in Primo is 0.5. Um, I'm not going to talk about the medians because it was a very high risk group. Right. In that same population, HRD non BRAC and PALO was 0.43. Are you at least tempted to kind of use both drugs? I am. I am tempted. I'm really you, tempted. Meaning niraparib and BEV? Uh, yeah, right. Niraparib and BEV. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. So well, we have, we have safety data from Avenue. I know. <laughs> but but seriously, message. so you yeah. are tempted. I am tempted. What do you guys think? I'm tempted. You're tempted. And I'm not, exp I'm not asking for, oh, I'm going to use it all the time. But, but Tempted, I think, you know, gives the flavor. Go ahead, go ahead. Well, no, what I was going to say is, for me, it's going to be the group that I'm giving Bev to in the upfront. Right, already. Right? Yeah, you've already, already made that decision. Yeah. So now I know, and I don't like, once I start Bev, if I don't have to, I don't like to stop it, right? right. Because I feel like you keep and getting working, that benefit. And it's working, and she's tolerating it. She's tolerating it. So now I feel good about adding a Laparib to that patient's regimen. I mean, it makes me, I, I feel like that patient is really going to benefit. And, and it's exploratory, but exploratorily, no, I feel good about it.